Coming up next, ladies and gentlemen, it's the Pro Wrestling Report Prime Time Saturday night. We're on location here at Karma Bar and Grill again. And what a week of professional wrestling. Ring of Honor had a pay-per-view. NXT had a special. SummerSlam happened. And then we even had Raw, SmackDown, and Impact. We cover it all, including this week's DWHS and hot news right here, right now on Prime Time Saturday night. This is the Pro Wrestling Report Primetime TV, the longest running pro wrestling news program in the world, with your hosts, David Hero and Damian Nelson. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Pro Wrestling Report Primetime Saturday night. Damian Nelson sitting alongside David Octavius of Tiberius, the alleged backyard, one time knockout, straight edge, hardcore Hall of Famer hero here on Saturday. August 27, 2016, it is back 27. at Karma Bar and Grill. Yes, the place where they're going to be showing the CM Punk fight next month. UFC 203. Yes, mm -hmm. CM Punk. So we're going to be here till then? Is that the arrangement? I, th I think we should. I'm totally fine with well, that. Well, they, they have, have Jameson here for you. They do you. have Irish whiskey upstairs. Yes, they do. And I am um, I'm, I'm ready for that. Are you parched? Uh, no, I am not. Because I'm here and I'm ready to talk about the amazing week that was in professional wrestling. So let's get right down to it, folks, with this week's big story. And huge news coming out of not only SummerSlam, stories. but also coming out of Raw this past Monday night. At SummerSlam, last Sunday night at the Barclays Center in Brooklyn, New York, Finn Balor, the Demon King, defeated Seth Rollins to become the first ever WWE Universal Champion. The what? De the Demon King beat Seth Rollins. The Finn Balor, Finn the Demon Balor King. Finn Balor was Demon originally King, Balor. scheduled, but he didn't wrestle. The Demon King did all the dirty work. They are the same person. Much like there is no Easter Bunny, no Santa Claus, no Tooth Fairy. But how, how is that the same person? We're not talking about... Alter Ego. You have one of the... Oh, just the ego part. <laughs> well, anyways, it's folks, Finn Balor would ego. become the first ever Universal Champion, defeating Seth Rollins, grabbing that beautiful red championship belt and bringing it over to Raw. We would find out, though, before Raw, that Finn Balor didn't fare very well in that matchup against Seth Rollins at SummerSlam as he suffered a torn labrum after dislocating his shoulder and popping it back in during the matchup at SummerSlam. Finn Balor relinquishes his newly won Universal Championship to kick off Raw this past Monday night and a big, bad break for the Demon King in his it, inaugural it, month in it, WWE it was, on WWE Raw. It was a, an amazing three weeks for uh, Finn Balor, the Demon King, and it came to a screeching halt. That it did. On one of the biggest pay-per-views of the year. So now let's go back to that one of the biggest pay-per-views of the year and let's talk about the move that did it. Yes. It was that running power bomb the onto the wall. Bomb. The buckle the bomb, buckle on bomb the wall. if you will. And uh, Finn Balor, you could see it didn't end well when it happened. It's the same move that broke Sting's neck. I thought that was in the ring. Yes, a, a but he did move, that but... move in the in the corner. So many have talked about, including your dear close personal friend, Bret Hart, who have said that Seth Rollins is dangerous and he injures people well, and that it's let, his let, fault let, that Finn Balor honest. suffered this injury. He on busted John Cena's beak, right? Mm -hmm. He retires Sting. Well, well that, 12 years that, in TNA retired Sting. Well, but that didn't help. You're right. And then he, he, he knocks out the Demon King on his debut night. It takes two to tango, right? In a wrestling ring? Here's my question. Let me finish. Larry, You're let me finish. You're so wrong. Already. Let me finish. This is just a question. So, one person executes the move, the other person takes, takes the move. But the Who one, was at fault based on what you saw from in what the SummerSlam match? Is Seth Rollins did not execute the move appropriately. He did not send him flat, he sent him on an angle. If I pick you up and I slam you, Good luck with that. And I don't slam you flat, you're going to get hurt. Correct, because you have to do your part and I have to yes, do mine. Yes, and Seth Rollins did not do his part. Yes, yes, Finn Balor, the Demon King, reached backwards to catch himself. But to figure out where he was. Well, he didn't know how far. Exactly. He, he wasn't square yeah. going into the wall. Mm -hmm. Now, let's be fair. Uh, these and it does happen. calculations yes. happen frequently, sure. more so than we'll ever but know. But if you're doing a move like that where you're throwing a guy backwards and he doesn't know how far back until the impact, you, you got to protect him. How you know? could Seth have done so? Closer. Or was it too late? He, he should have been closer. Failure to launch? I mean, there, there's guys that do power bombs. I mean, Ryback, and there's other guys that do ridiculous power bombs that aren't safe. So does Seth Rollins, should he have repercussions? 
for his recklessness, if you are saying that. I think that. they should take that move out of his repertoire. Like the curb stop? Yes. Think about that. I don't think anyone actually got injured from the curb stop, though. It was the potential for injury yeah. that uh, caused the end of that. Now, yesterday on Feedback Friday, also available here on Fight TV and on YouTube, we talked about the matchup between Charlotte and Sasha Banks, where Charlotte became the new women's champion. And we talked about some of these dangerous moves, David Hero. How do you, if, let's say this was happening in your wrestling company, yes. how do you abate these problems? How do you ensure that your talents are, are, are protected, if you will, and that these reckless injuries don't happen well you really can't because the talents are going to do what they want to do unless you know certain moves that look dangerous you try to avoid those but these guys are going out there and they're trying to get noticed you know they're they're, they're getting they're, they're getting valuable tv time and they want to do the most amazing moves to get the greatest reaction so the people in the office say wow that's amazing look what they did to get their push and to keep their spot so it's dangerous. I mean, wrestling was never this insane before. Well, uh, you're right, but until the days of ECW and then the Monday Night Wars, well, which and, took and everything you know up in several and, and, and let's be honest, Matt and Jeff Hardy changed the game also. Edge and Christian, yeah. those TLC matches, the boys. We'll they changed all of it. And, you know, but back in the 80s and in the 90s, you never saw guys doing the stuff that they were doing. The Hulk Hogan leg drop would pin people. Now it's just a move. Even off the top rope, which was it Cena to Styles or Styles to Cena? We saw that on Sunday. I can't recall who did it. Was, it was uh, could have been Charlotte. To it was Sasha. Cena. It was Cena. All right, so good discussion on the injury of Finn Balor, but the overall situation with Finn Balor, who now is six months on the shelf after being coming the first Universal Champion at SummerSlam, big night for him and a horrible night all at the same time. He has the potential to get lost in the shuffle when he comes back. That potential is definitely always there. However. Doesn't the company hold a ton of responsibility for that? No. They've got to move forward and do what well, they've they got to do. do. And let's face it. Look at the guys that have left. CM Punk. Who? Daniel Bryan. I remember him. There's lots of guys that have... Talking moved. smack on Tuesday? Yeah, with, the, with, with your boy. about the, that a little bit later, With your too. boy, the Mizzy. Um, but, you know, there's always another guy to take that spot. There has to be because the company must go on. The show must go and on. And they did that Monday night when Finn Balor's gone. They bring up the second biggest star of NXT. Big Cass? No. Bailey. Mm -hmm. Right? I know that's down on your run sheet, but, I mean, think about it. They were panicking. They needed to replace him as soon as possible. So who did Bailey replace? You're saying Bailey replaced Finn Balor? Sasha Banks. Okay. <laughs> That's more why reasonable. Did you, why did you roll your Well, time? because, I mean, just you yesterday, don't, just don't, 24 you, hours ago, just 24 hours ago, you sat here burying Finn Balor again, calling him a cruiserweight. No, I said... Saying that he, he had to become the Demon King because he was nothing without it. I didn't say that. That's what I heard. I said that the office, that the powers that be obviously didn't feel Finn Balor's name was strong enough alone to be in the main event for the Universal Championship. And that's why they brought the Demon King gimmick for more pomp and circumstance. So Finn Balor is no longer the Universal Champion. He is, however, going to go down you know, in history you know as what? the first ever Universal Champion. We need to blame Universal the Champions. wrestling fans that get behind all of these guys. Here we go. They got behind CM Punk, what happened? Took his ball, went home. Got behind Daniel Bryan. Later. Got behind Daniel Bryan, what happened? Everything. Everything. They get behind Finn Balor. What happened? It's called the Smart Mark Fans Curse. They're behind AJ Styles, nothing's happened. AJ is a different breed. He too spent 15 to 20 years in the business before yeah, finally making it Yeah, but he's a legit 230 pound guy. Are you sure? He's like 5'11", sure? like almost six feet tall. He might be six feet tall. Why do you roll your eyes when- Because I don't understand your size argument. You lean okay. on this size okay. argument Which so much. Which one of the undersized guys have lasted? Which one of the under I, I gave you Shawn Michaels just a couple of weeks ago, if not but last week. But that was a different generation because you, you they worked a different style. You didn't quantify it. You okay, said how many the of the last undersized years. guys, which is another years. dig, by the way. They're not undersized. They're yes, just they of a are. different size class. <laughs> In the last 15 years. Rey Mysterio. Okay, I'll give you him. The Miz. Nope. Daniel Bryan. He We're made it. He made him into WrestleMania, did, beat last, Batista and Triple H in one night, but he made it. But didn't last. That's what we're talking about longevity. Cody Rhodes. He made it. Longevity. He had it. He was there for what, seven, Who's eight had years? He a 20 year career. 
None of them. Keep going. Keep keep throwing more. No, because you, you're going to have a spin cycle for no, each I, and every one of them, no. and it's not going to support your original argument, but it will support what whatever new argument? argument. Exactly. You don't know. You don't know Jack. I do know cousin Jack. <laughs> that's dangerous, <laughs> folks. So He's much more to size. talk about here in uh, this week's edition of PWR Primetime. Feels like we're going to go overtime again, as we did last week, because you can't can't stay focused. But that's fine. Oh, my glasses are fine. People want more of me, anyways. So when we come back, uh, as a matter of fact, that's not my job. Someone else is going to tell us what we're going to have when we come back here on Primetime. Boy. Dave and Damien talk about this week's Explosive Raw. Coming up next on PWR Primetime on YouTube and Fight TV. Welcome to the Pro Wrestling Report, Prime Time Saturday night. Damian Nelson sitting here alongside you David feel better Hero. Now? We are on location here at Karma Bar and Grill, Milwaukee. They're going to be showing so UFC heated. 203, featuring 202, 203, 203, featuring your dear close personal friend CM Punk. I was not heated at all. I am. I told you before. Passionate? I went to the Wolf Is that Blitzer. The word? Passionate. I went to the Wolf Blitzer School of Journalism, and I, I was in the Bobby Heenan wing. I know how to ask the right questions. You, unfortunately, have been trained by the, 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 the politicians who never answer a question directly when asked. They spin it and give different answers, which then makes you forget what the original question was, which you did before the break. Case in point. You're so rude. Nobody wants to hear you bicker with yourself. So let's go to this week's WWE Raw report, ladies and gentlemen. And what a week on Raw. We talked about the big story at the beginning of the show with Finn Balor relinquishing the WWE Universal Championship due to injury. But we would find out that there would be a series of matchups to determine who next week will get the opportunity to be the second ever Universal Champion. And David, are you ready for these names of the four whoa, men who whoa, qualify? Wait, 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 stop. You know what I thought? Yes, and listen. What I thought was extremely humorous, not humorous, humorous? but hu humorous. He's certainly not in the tournament. Was that all those guys that came down to the ring, <laughs> and it was uh, Rusev, it was Jericho, Roman Reigns, Owen, Jericho, Zane. all of them, Enzo and Cass, and Mick Foley goes, and you're all deserving. And I'm thinking, Enzo? How is he deserving? Well... Are you sure you're asking that question? I am. I mean, Enzo is a great talent, but he's not anywhere near the conversation of Universal. Okay. R am I wrong? Well, I mean, it, the, the, the narrative continues, David Hero. Enzo happens to be one of those undersized stars. I did not say that, but he's larger than my <laughs> personality. Folks, the four men who qualified and will be battling it out in a fatal four-way match for the WWE Universal Championship Monday night on Raw are as follows. Are you ready? Yes. Chris Jericho. I'm sorry, not Chris Jericho. Seth Rollins. <laughs> Seth Rollins, Kevin yeah, Owens, yes. Roman Reigns, and Big Cass. Uh, Big Cass is in the final four. Yep. Defeating Rusev, who Rusev would have been my favorite. I would have loved to have seen Rusev become the Universal Champion. Really? Yeah, I, I I do, but now it's you know, but now who do you go with? I mean, if it's me, you can't have Seth Rollins. But here's what's great about it's Seth not Rollins: as predictable. He deserves it because he never lost it, and every chance he's gotten to get Whoa, it, he has floundered. The brakes. Every chance he's gotten to get it, he has floundered. He's lost it. He lost it to Dean Ambrose three minutes later. That almost doesn't. But count. he also beat him in the triple threat. But the story, if you will, of, D of uh, Seth Rollins trying to get that championship back, he's almost weaseling his way into it without having done so. Roman Reigns can't be the guy. Why not? He is the guy. I have no problem with Roman Reigns winning it. How much does he weigh? He's at least 260. No, he's not. 250? 225 at most. Oh, really? Yeah. He has like 40 pounds worth of hair with hair gel. And then you got... Kevin Owens is the guy that needs to win. You want Kevin I Owens, the guy believe, you also hated because I he was cannot, oversized. I cannot believe I am saying this. And I saw Kevin Owens at Wizard World in Chicago. 
He was not. <laughs> did not yes, see I did. Kevin Owens at Wizard Road in Chicago. I did. I took a you picture absolutely with him. did not. That was not him. It looked just like him. He was of. He was. He was not. He was of a different he nationality. He got his eyes dilated. He had a hard time seeing. Oh. I would like you to continue speaking on the subject you were speaking on before you didn't meet Kevin Owens at Wizard World in Chicago. That was not him. Are you sure? He looked just like him. He was shorter. Well, I'm tall. They all look short next to me. Kevin Owens can win because that way if he keeps the belt long enough when Finn Balor comes back, they already have the backstory of Finn Balor and Kevin Owens for the NXT title. It's weak. The story will be when Balor returns, Rollins, if he wins a championship, and Balor. That's a more sustainable story. Well, then you know what? Then put the belt on Reigns. That's probably not going to end well. Why? Because he's climbing back up. Listen, the fans already hate the belts to put on the guy they hate. <laughs> there is some truth to that logic there, for yeah. sure. You know, when you film in a bar, you, you, you get these random women you never know what walking by see. who are doing weird things. It's fun. Do you have any beads? I'm fresh out. <sighs> no. All right, folks. Well, another big newsworthy thing. David Hero talked about it earlier in the big story, but Bailey is called up from NXT and joins the Raw roster. And now she's part of the mix, going after Charlotte's WWE Women's Championship. And the fans love Bailey. It is ridiculous how the fans are just banana about her. Would you do? Would you hug her? Sure, I'd hug her. Good well, call up. Oh, she had a great match with Asuka in NXT yeah, yes. on, on Saturday and night. And you know what? By her putting over Asuka again, that means there's nothing left for her to do in NXT. Yeah. Bring her up. My only, my only, and I want, we want to call it a complaint about Bailey because she does everything great. The fans love her. She, 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 she plays her character well. She's tremendous in the ring. I just don't like her finish. I don't like a belly to belly suplex that beats people because Brock Lesnar can't beat somebody with a German suplex. Oh, he can. Which he just is, chooses not to. But you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It just seems like it's a weak finishing move for her, you know, but I'm sure it'll be fine and it'll all work out. Well, what didn't work out was giving Titus O'Neil a live microphone on Raw Monday night, folks. It was B-R-U-T-A-L, brutal. It may be one of the three you worst You said it was worse than Ahmed Johnson. I have ever seen before in my life. I certainly wouldn't have compared him to Ahmed Johnson. I would have thought maybe I'd compare him to the guy that wrestled Braun Strowman who likes big oily men or something, he said in his promo when asked about why he picked Tony Braun Scarpone Strowman. Tony Scarpone said that? No, it was uh, not, no, that was, it was not him. But well, anyways, like him. Titus O'Neil, brew. And it felt like a 48 minute promo when I think it might have been two. Was it, it as was bad as a George horrible. Animal Steel promo? No, because those were entertaining. Mine, Miss Elizabeth, mine. Hmm. Why give Titus O'Neil that opportunity? Now, what he was setting up was the reasoning why he was going to, uh, he could have been Here's in that Universal Championship about, matchup, if not for, uh, it's not for his partner from the primetime players. Here's Odin what was funny O'Neil. about that. He was calling out Bob Backlund. Bob Backlund comes out and says, I didn't call you out here. He beats him up, then Darren Young comes and makes He's a like, save. He, All of it, you could hear that while it was going on. Oh, a pen drop. Yeah. Ah. It was brutal. And I'm not, I will give the benefit of the doubt, and I have nothing against Titus O'Neil. I think it's a tremendous performance. That's not what but you the said company, the break. The company normally protects and controls things better than they did with giving him a live microphone. They should have pre-taped that backstage or something. We should give Justin LeBar a call on that. Who? JLB. The guy that works with Eisenberg. Yes. I bet he has a scoop on that. Well... Speaking of scoops, if you will, David Hero, WWE broke its own scoop. The Dudley Boys broke their own scoop earlier in the night on Monday by announcing that that would be their farewell, if you will, and they would be departing WWE after their one-year return just uh, at SummerSlam in 2015. So this was good. It was cool. It was fun. It was emotional to a degree, but it ended in interruption. Yeah, they laid the Dudleys out. They did. Which I thought was very interesting. I mean, it was a way of getting the club over because, let's be honest, I'm a big Doc Gallows fan. They Doc have been Gallows. They've been very uneventful. Their New Day feud may have damaged them a little bit. Wearing those, I haven't thought about it at SummerSlam. I'm like, why are these two monsters standing out there in doctor's robes? Well, because they were taking urine tests. I understand that. You're not going to wear a regular robe. 
Um, the Dudleys are sort of putting feelers out, though, about where we, the fans, want to see them again. So it doesn't appear as if it was their choice I wouldn't be, to not be no, renewed. No, I, I'm pretty confident that they would have been resigned. But I think at the same time, their value is extremely high, as now that they've been back in WWE. Uh, they had a, they, they've had a very they, they've gotten a lot of new t fresh more TV time. I can see them going to Japan. I can see them going back to TNA. They are older, uh, tenured, if you will. We'll say that. Um, but when they came back to WWE, I think they had a purpose, and I think they served that purpose, which was to help elevate the overall tag team division, yes, and they did. They did, and they didn't win the tag belts, which I was surprised. I thought they'd get one more run with those. Yeah. But I can see them going back to TNA right now. Was their departure uh, negatively impacted by the angle surrounding it? No, not at all. They passed the ultimate torch one last time. Yes. Well, the Dudleys let another team put them through a table. On their farewell show yes. at WWE. Yes. That's significant. Now, they could right? come back as the machines next week. The machines? Yeah. The machine guns? Remember the giant machine, super machine, big That's machine before my time. from the 80s? No, nah, it was not. I didn't start watching until 87. You know what? Google it. YouTube it. The machines. I'm Bing. I don't Google. Then Bing it. <clears throat> I will bring it if you really want me to. All right. So that was Raw this past Monday night. Be sure to check out Battle of the Brands, available right here on our YouTube channel as well, where we give our thoughts and share your Twitter poll results over which show won the week. And we're going to talk about the other show on the blue side of things, which was also very eventful in just a few moments. Coming up next, we talk about two new championship titles on SmackDown in this week's SmackDown Report on PWR Primetime TV. The Soder family thought they'd take a road trip this summer. A little fun, a little sun. What could possibly go wrong? Even under the best driving conditions, semi-trucks can still be dangerous. The results of being in a wreck with 40 tons of steel and speed can be catastrophic. And it only gets worse when you don't have Gruber Lofses on your side. If you or a loved one has been injured by a semi-truck, call Gruber Lofses now. One call, that's all. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to Pro Wrestling Report Prime Time here on Fight TV and YouTube. Damian Nelson sitting alongside he who shall not steal. Didn't you read the commandments? I need to read where we are. Then maybe you should have printed lost. and brought your own. Again, if you wouldn't keep screwing your interns, we wouldn't have to. We wouldn't keep losing them, and you'd have people to do that for you. You're your own worst nightmare. <laughs> Let's go to this week's SmackDown report. That's folks. how rumors start. You can't say that kind of stuff on. It's TV. not a rumor when it's true, and I can do that on TV. I don't have interns. SmackDown, folks, and the Blue Show this week was monumental in several ways, not just for what happened during the two-hour block on USA, but what happened after. But before we get to that, let's talk about how the show kicked off. The announcement of two new championships coming to the Blue Side, a tag team championship and a women's championship. Now, these championship additions had long been rumored. Now they are reality. And now that they are reality, David Hero, both shows with their own series of championships across the board. Your thoughts, not necessarily on the look of the titles, because nobody gives a damn no, no, what the titles no, no. look like. I like I like how all the titles are uniform. The it tag belts makes are the them tag. equal, right? Yes, exactly. No one has a better belt right now. True, very true. The other brand, yeah, uh, and that was true. well done. Uh, but your thoughts on the announcement of these championships? It's needed because you have a lot of great talents that need to fight for something. And, you know, if, if they can't get a heat in the storyline, at least there's heat while they're chasing for a championship. Very true. Very true. Well, the championships will be decided in two very different fashions, folks. Firstly, we saw the beginning of a tag team championship title tournament on this past Tuesday SmackDown. And two teams advanced in that tournament. Firstly, the Usos, and also the uh, team of American, American Alpha. American Alpha. Now, that tournament's gonna culminate at the Backlash pay-per-view, which I believe is September 11th on the WWE Network. That's gonna be a huge pay-per-view. There's gonna, be a, lot to good, be, there's gonna be a lot of good stuff on there. You're gonna get AJ Styles and Dean Ambrose. You're gonna get the tournament finals. It's the big SmackDown pay-per-view. That it is, and also the women's championship will be decided in a six-pack challenge, which is becoming a SmackDown thing. Let me read the names here, because it's easy to forget some of the new ones um, that are over on SmackDown. Becky Lynch, Natalia, Alexa Bliss, Carmella, the red hot Naomi right now. How about that entrance? She has the best entrance want to get up and dance. And no, she doesn't. Finn Balor does. Again, again, again. Is Finn Just Balor, shovel is out, Finn Balor shovel out right now? 
Or does the I demon have a better I don't know entrance? what he's doing right Which now. Which one is it? They're, They're the, the same the demon. person. No, it's not. It's two different entrances. And also, in that matchup, folks, will be the returning Nikki Bella, who returned on, at SummerSlam this past Sunday. I can see Nikki Bella getting it. She should, shouldn't she? You go from there to where, though? Nikki Bella and what and who? Becky Lynch is pretty solid also right now. But not as solid as she could be, which is leading to your point. Go with the establishment. Supporting your point, right? Yeah. But I can see Naomi also. I would like to see Naomi, I think her time has come. As far as? Becoming the, a, the women's champion. Really? Yeah. Remember a year ago, Naomi wins, are we riot? Yeah. And then they bring in Sasha and Charlotte and Becky, and everyone forgets about Naomi all of a sudden. Uh huh. That's true. Mm hmm. That is true. How about the handling of Eva Marie this past Sunday at SummerSlam? It was great. This was is fantastic. one of the most brilliant things that has happened in the last 20 years in wrestling. The handling of Eva in Marie. In the last 20 years? It is one of the most brilliant things that has been done. Better than the Finn Balor Demon King entrance? No, one of the, which means oh. it is amongst other companies. Oh, okay. But the point you made, I believe, last week or two weeks ago, whatever it was, about she can't wrestle because she can't wrestle. And now she's suspended, so she can't wrestle. But the storyline and her not wrestling can continue for a very long time. Yes. It is brilliant. And I hope they thought about it as opposed to stumbling into it. Now, they couldn't thought about her suspension, which she says is only Adderall. But that's prescribed, too, and you should be able to show Whoa, a prescription for it's it. it's not always prescribed. Well, it should be. But sometimes you but don't have a prescription for it. Sometimes you find a bottle laying in the how gym. Do you? And you just take it? Well, if it says Adderall, it says if it says... You end up like Prince. Well, no, if it says take one every three hours, there's instructions. <laughs> but your name isn't on it. Now you're getting the details. No. <laughs> oh, gosh, almighty Lord. What do they do? Can they go another three weeks with this Eva Marie storyline without her appearing, period, as she is suspended? Well, now they don't... She was advertised to be at SummerSlam. Correct, so they had to do something. So huh? now she's not advertised, so now she'll take some time off. But she doesn't have to. She is, she but is. Her, the gimmick doesn't have yeah. to. That's what's great about it. Well, so will the gimmick take some time off? Yes, it has to. Her flight has not yet been delayed. Her dog has not yet ate her homework. She, they still got excuses they could use There's for the next several weeks. And, and if you need help, I'm sure you could offer some more. I don't deal with excuses. I deal with reality. You are the man of excuses as opposed to, uh, as, as, as proven steel. by you providing excuses for why you don't hate Finn Balor, even though you clearly do. I, 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 CM Punk, Dean Ambrose, Daniel Bryan to a degree, Kevin Owens for a while, now Finn Balor. You hate them all. And well, I just I, don't understand how you can harbor a, so hate, much hatred hate in your soul word. for these men. I don't hate anybody. I don't. The tape would say differently. Well, if you, pay, if you play it backwards, yes. If you play it the way I'm speaking, you will understand I have So you're alleging opinions. that I am not hearing the words that are coming out of your mouth. No, you are, 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 are assuming words. <laughs> you're trying to trump me. <laughs> you're trying to spin all my words around and make it negative. No, the difference between you and him is your words are somewhat the same week to week. So How it's easy to difference? follow How and find out. How is that a difference? <laughs> I never once said I hate Finn Balor. No, but every week you sit here and you talk smack. And speaking of talking smack, Daniel Bryan and The Miz got into a bit of an altercation this past Tuesday night. And you should be ashamed of yourself. From SmackDown, talking smack. And it seemed to be a bit real between uh, the two. You really think so? You're going to be like, it was. I said like it seemed all these to other be, fans that think I said it, was it a seemed to be a shoot. bit real. You don't think there were shoot elements involved in that conversation between the two? I think that they blurred real life and fantasy land together, which makes a great promo, which is what you're supposed to do. That's how you get good heat. If Daniel Bryan was that upset, he would have punched. If he really, if Daniel he Bryan. He walked off. Listen, if Daniel Bryan really believes that The Miz is a coward, he would have got up and punched him in the face. Exactly. See? Dot the I's and cross the T's and it all makes sense. You of all people should know this. You got three things that are great that happened this past weekend over the course of Sunday through Tuesday. You got the match between Brock Lesnar and Randy Orton, which yes. led to questions of worked or shoot. You've got the altercation between The Miz and Daniel Bryan, which leads to the question of worked or shoot. You've got the now somewhat pretty much confirmed reports of the altercation between Chris Jericho and Brock Lesnar backstage at SummerSlam. Which we haven't talked about yet. We have not. Uh, 
This is good for WWE, though, because you no, want to be asking that question, don't you? Because the fans that think they know everything now realize they don't know everything. But that's what's great, because yes. those questions build intrigue, which builds the opportunity for more people to tune in and view. And both shows did damn good in the ratings this past week. 3.2 million for Raw, 2.7 million for SmackDown, both up over the prior week. Yeah, and, and it was great business on, on all three shows, and you throw in the NXT TakeOver pay-per-view that was solid they sold out the barclays three nights in a row they didn't kudos to wwe for letting tom phillips and corey uh, graves call the action at nxt because sometimes they hot shot when the shows are big and put in bigger names and they did they were the best uh, commentary team over the course well, of the because weekend. they know those talents and right exactly it was very good but uh smackdown great this week as a matter of fact you the viewers as we talked about on battle of the brands thought that smackdown was the better show of the two again this week and that says a lot folks but that is this week's smackdown report we'll be right back coming up next we've got hot news this week's tna impact report and dwhs right here on pwr primetime on youtube and fight tv the Pro Wrestling Report primetime Saturday night here on uh, Fight TV and YouTube. You know, David, here's something we haven't talked about. What's that? Well, man, people have been asking. You know, the few people I respond to on Twitter. Um, yeah, you, you know, know, you, you know? do a really terrible job of that. Well, because uh, I believe a special effect is not a special effect if you overuse it. So my but posts I'm are few always, and far between. I'm always picking up your slack. Is, yes, and you're always tweeting and insta-ing and booking and... That's why I mute you, because it becomes obnoxious. Me, on the other hand, it's when I knowledge. say something, it's the world stops because they want to hear. No, they the stop because they got to double check your spelling. And Nelson. Folks, as you know, the Pro Wrestling Report for the last several years had a tremendous partnership on television here in Milwaukee with My24 Milwaukee. Well, fans, we have uh, moved on from that venture and decided to bring our shows back into the uh, less controlled realm of the internet, if you will. Aww. And uh, we have ended our relationship with My24 Milwaukee, but I want to give a special shout out and thanks to the peeps at My24 Milwaukee specifically, Paul Rudolph, Andrew Drought. Uh, thank you, David Hero. I was in the middle of a moment here. Andrew Drought, Paul Rudolph. <laughs> Could have pushed the right button anyways. Uh, Paul Fix, a man who actually made it all happen in the very beginning, and uh, Emmett Light who was our uh, our light, if you will, at, at the end of the tunnel, which wasn't Milwaukee. the oncoming train for the first time. Not at all. It was a decision we struggled with, but a decision I am happy to have made, and we will continue, this show will continue the Pro Wrestling Report as the number one and longest running professional wrestling discussion show in the world today. Nobody beats us, as uh, the, the, what was he called? The Wiz on Seinfeld said. The Wiz? Yeah, The Wiz. Not The Miz, The Wiz. I the Miz does I never Wiz. watched Seinfeld. Yeah, that's part of your problem in life. Did you ever watch All in the Family? Of course I did. Uh -huh. What about the Jeffersons? Were you not able to stomach that? No, 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 no. I mean, I did. Wheezy was a great character. Let's go to this week's uh, WWE, I'm sorry, TNA Impact Wrestling Report. And a uh, big main event on Impact Wrestling this past Thursday night as EC3 defeated Galloway with Aaron Rex as a special guest referee to maintain his world championship I'm spot. I'm confused as to why Aaron Rex was the referee. Well, they got to use them somehow. I, I mean, Bri you know, Brian Stifler and, 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 and Brian Hebner are great referees. Brian Stifler, he's a clumsy referee. You saw what he did at Blizzard, bro. He fell out of the ring, threw himself into the ring post. Oh, really? That's what I saw. That's what you saw. Yeah. He is a Hey, man, put a switchblade tried to cut me. You weren't there. You were busy no, in the ring I, with Abyss. Yeah, I was busy in the ring. But I, I don't understand why they put Aaron Rex in that spot. I just don't. How else should they have used him, or should they have used him at all? They, not as a special guest referee, but that's what they do when they bring a new guy in. They put him in that spot to eventually find a program with somebody else. But I'd rather see Aaron Rex wrestling than refereeing. How long do you think we should wait for him to referee? Because it appears as if, I'm sorry, wrestle. It appears as if his first opponent might, opponent might indeed be Drew Galloway. At Bound for Glory. 
Which is what they should do. October 1st? Well, I don't know when. It's supposed to be in September. They don't even know yet. No, they've announced the date and Did the location. They? It'll be happening in Orlando, Florida, side of WrestleMania next year. So this being their WrestleMania. Uh-huh. And they'll be doing it in the same city. I like how you said that. What? Their WrestleMania, the site of WrestleMania. Bound for Glory is indeed BFG. that company's WrestleMania, right? Yes, it is. They should give away for free on TV. Make it a special yes. on Pop TV? Yes. Give a reason to tune in? Yes. It's not a bad idea. I think their ratings were up about 12, 13% from prior week. Um, maybe it's the Aaron Rex draw. So what is 12% of 300,000? 36? Uh, 360? Uh, that is this week's Impact Wrestling Report, ladies and gentlemen. And now let's go to Hot News. Hot News, which is, of course, brought to you by the Pro Wrestling Report on Fight TV. That's F-I-T-E, Fight. And uh, you can download the application on our on the iTunes Store and for in the free. Google Play Store. Absolutely free. free, no charge for that and most of the content on uh, Fight TV, including the Pro Wrestling Report and Ring of Honor Wrestling. Monday nights at 7 p.m. Eastern Monday, uh, is when you can catch Ring of Honor's weekly episode. And also the Pro Wrestling Report, Feedback Friday, Friday nights at 8 o'clock p.m. And this very program, Prime Time, Saturday nights at 8 o'clock p.m. as well. So thanks to everybody for joining us here on Fight. TV, the application. You even get notifications on your mobile device when big things happen yes, from Fight TV and when that. new episodes are available of certain shows. Well, this week's hot news kicks off with some news from Ring of Honor as there is a brand new Ring of Honor champion after their huge pay per view event this past Friday. Adam Cole, David Hero, finally gets the win over Jay Lethal. Jay Lethal relinquishing his long held Ring of Honor World Championship to a very deserving Adam Cole. Jay Lethal has had that belt. For a long, uh, yeah, very long, a time. couple years, wouldn't you say? Uh, feels it like feels longer like than it. the year of the new day, but uh, I'm not sure how much longer it is. Mm -hmm. what? Adam Cole is 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 a great torch bearer for them. This story went a long time and built real good. They may have That's had one of the best storylines over the last 12 months in professional wrestling overall. And Milwaukee's own Silas Young had a great match. Coming up a little bit short, but a fantastic match. I'm not saying he's short. I'm saying he came up short. He's the last real man. Don't piss him off. NXT TakeOver was this past Saturday night in Brooklyn, Brooklyn at the Barclays Center. And uh, we saw a brand new NXT champion crowned as Samoa Joe would lose his championship to Nakamura. Nakamura walks out of the Barclays Center with the NXT gold. How about that entrance, by the way? He had a great he had entrance. An orchestra plan, basically. It was a violin. A violin. Well, is that violin not part of an orchestra? No, an orchestra is a whole bunch of other. With a violin. But there wasn't. There wasn't. Like, and the pit. There wasn't a cello and, stick. and a flute and everything else. And the maestro. It was. It was just the guy with the violin. It was a great match. Thank Samoa you. Joe's jaw got knocked into the yeah. uh, into the East River. <laughs> the Hudson or the East. Either or, it doesn't matter. They haven't found it yet. <laughs> At least it's not the Detroit River with those lost Intercontinental Championship belts. Um, good show was NXT TakeOver. As we talked about, Asaka, Asuka, and Bailey. Uh, another great physical matchup between the two. Uh, Milwaukee's own uh, Austin Aries also on that program. Interesting, though, that in Battle of the Brands this past Thursday, the fans, you people, decided and said that you people? NXT TakeOver was better than SummerSlam. That's As a matter surprising. of fact, 78% to 22% picking TakeOver over That's because SummerSlam. the wrestling fans don't like them be. They, 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 want, they like NXT. We talked about Smack, uh, SummerSlam why you, on... Why are you switching gears on me? Because it's a good discussion I'm about to start. Oh, We talked okay. about SummerSlam on Feedback Friday yesterday, and uh, it was interesting that so many of you thought SummerSlam was a bad show. I, for one, think SummerSlam was one of the best shows WWE has presented this year, if not the best, because of the intrigue in all the matches, the greatness of some of the matches, and the significance of the matches. A Dean Ambrose retaining the championship over Ziggler, which, what do you do with him now, now that you've proven to the world he's not good enough and can't compete, because that's what the challenge was going into the matchup. You had the new Universal Champion crowned in Finn Balor, a new Women's Champion in Charlotte, it was a big show with SummerSlam. The, it was 11 matches. It was four hours and 10 minutes long. Could have been longer. Remember, WrestleMania was like the Titanic on replay. Thank God it wasn't. Um, you know, SummerSlam, I think, was one of the best offerings of the year. If you looked at it match by match, mm -hmm. every match was, was considered a big match. Yeah. But the fans like NXT because that's their darling. That's all the underdogs. More emotional investment into yes, that. Exactly. Understood. 
Well, that is this week's hot news, ladies and gentlemen. Now let's find out what the comical portion of the show is this oh, week. When David the, Hero shares his the, spoken word. This is this the segment, highest of course, brought to you segment. by the Pope, D'Angelo De Niro. Well, first of all, it's the highest rated segment on the show, and it's called DHHS. And let's, D -H -S. Talk, let's talk about Bobby Roode, AJ Styles, ah, and Samoa Joe. I like this. I like Three this. Three studs. Huge. In TNA. Huge Bobby Roode. Hold on. Okay, this is my segment. Zip it. Oh, how's it feel? It's, it's very frustrating. TNA was the home of Bobby Roode, it AJ was? Styles, and Samoa Joe for a long time. All pretty much grown there. Grown they worked there, other yes, places, yes, but they made, uh, were made that, stars that, there. Well, they were made. Yes, they as were as big a stars as they could have been in that game. Exactly. Company. All three guys, Joe and Bobby Roode, huge players at NXT TakeOver. Bobby Roode finally, yeah. Bobby Roode finally has the missing puzzle piece, and it's his theme music. It adds charisma what about to the it. lift. Can I finish? It adds to his character. When he comes down to Glorious and 15,000 people are singing along, it's an added bonus. Samoa Joe, another great match. Do you know one million people up through it's Wednesday had downloaded that downloaded song? An, an iTunes. The theme song. And then you have AJ Styles, who defeated the biggest name in pro wrestling in John Cena. Clean. For the second time. If I'm Dixie Carter, Ooh. and I know that I had present. Samoa Joe, Bobby Roode, and AJ well, Styles, now, oh, zip it, had those three talents, and I couldn't sell out more than 800 people, in those buildings, that tells me that I had I had the workhorses. I didn't have the marketing behind them to make them bigger stars. Right now, Bobby Roode is as close to household name as he's ever been. Yeah. It's so sad, is Samoa actually. Joe, and so it's is AJ great, Styles. But it's sad. And, and we know all three of those guys. Yeah. And we have been in the Hammond, Indiana Civic Centers with 400 people in the building. Well, and they and go out there and they bust their butts. And now to watch Bobby Roode come down from that elevation platform, you, with that reaction, you can tell on his face, he knows he's there now. You talk about that night, and there is so much, and I'm not saying this for any reason other than the, the, the point of reference right now. There's so much you and I have seen, you more than me, but you and I have seen that we've never talked about on this show. Right. And one of those things was Bobby Roode and a, a bit of a blow up that he had backstage at that show in Hammond, Indiana, uh, about the company he was working for. Yeah. That was quite public. Yes. And Saw it with these four eyes. Six. And, 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 and the amazing thing is, is that everyone says, oh, WWE sucks. New Japan's better, Ring of Honor's better. Let me tell you something. Those three guys would not, would not have the megastar status they have now if it wasn't for the machine as the WWE. And with that, David Hero has spoken. Well done. You may have, uh, you may have uh, redeemed yourself to a small degree for all your hatred earlier in the program with that DWHS. Well, okay. <laughs> If you're Dixie Carter, if you're the former president of TNA, she was president at the time, yes. are you tweeting about how proud you are of AJ Styles and proud you she are should. of Bobby Roode, proud you are And of, I'm going to release DVDs left and right of those guys right now. They might, they might make some money off those. Why, 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 seriously, why wouldn't you? If I had the catalog because of those three guys, I'm going to whore it out and try to sell as many as I can. We apologize to any working women watching this program who may have been offended by David's recent you statement. You do the same thing. You whore yourself out. I've seen you. I have never charged for it. Well, then you're stupid. Well, what are you? I was just saying, that's not good business. Carry on. Uh, folks, this, we are done. Uh, shocking revelation here by David Hero. I did not realize you moonlit. We are out of time. That is this week's edition of Prime Time. Thank you to Karma Bar and Grill for allowing us to be here. And we will see you again next week, right here on the Pro Wrestling Report Prime Time Saturday night. For that one, this is Damian Nelson. So long, everybody. <laughs>